Well, hello, this is Mr. Corbett and Frankie, and hopefully you're not too tired of sitting around at home. So I got an adventure we're gonna go on in the production lab at my house, and we're gonna make a few things. That is, unless, of course, you're too tired to watch this video. Now pay attention, because there's gonna be some questions along the way that you need to answer. So let's get started. Whenever you go to make anything, the first step is to identify the problem. So I figure in this crazy time, why not make a safety device? So I did some research on the internet and I came up with a whistle. Not only is it a safety device in case you get lost or need help, but it's gonna help annoy your family when you're sitting around doing nothing. So let's draw up a plan right here. Um, after doing some research, I came up with, I'm gonna need a piece of wood. So there's basically the plan that I need. I need a piece of wood that's one inch by one inch and six inches long. And I'm also gonna need a piece of quarter inch dowel. So let's go raid the wood pile and see what Mr. Corbett has in stock. All right, so here's Mr. Corbett's wood pile. So we're gonna search this and find a piece of wood that we could use uh, to make our whistle. Oh, here we go, we got a nice one, one inch by one inch piece of wood, so we'll cut off of that. And then in here we got all kinds of dowels, little ones, big ones, quarter inch dowels. Even back here we have some, some big ones. If you know what a dowel means, don't you? <sighs> Which Ninja Turtle am I? Okay, so let's measure out six inches. We're gonna put a mark. Next, we're gonna use a square. Remember, a square has how many degrees? That's a question. How many degrees are in a square? We're gonna set this against the wood and we're gonna draw a perfectly straight line all the way across. Just so you know, there's different kinds of squares. This is also a square. It goes against the wood. All right, it also has a ruler built into it. Let's check out some other squares. Whoa, there's a really big one. Check that out. It's for making big lines across big pieces of wood. What if the wood's bigger than that? And then up here, Mr. Corbett's got some bigger squares. It's called a framing square. So if you gotta lay out some big lines, oh, it doesn't reach all the way across. That's okay. We have even a bigger square. Look at that one, that one's four feet long. Boom, that can go really far, all right? And they call this a T square. What letter do you think it is? All right, back to cutting wood. Next question, what is this thing called? We use it all the time in the class. We're gonna put our wood in here. We're gonna turn this to clamp it, all right? It uses a screw, which is a simple machine. What is this called? They're mounted on the table. Next, I have a jigsaw. This is gonna cut our wood. We're gonna line it up with the line. Now, if you notice, the jigsaw blade goes up and down. If I was to flip this upside down and run it like this, what machine in our classroom is that very similar to? You've used it. What machine cuts like that? All right, we gotta drill a hole, so we're gonna be using this twist drill bit, which we've used in class, and when it spins, it actually pulls the sawdust up and through there. I got a nice set of twist drill bits. Look at all these drill bits, holy moly. And, to make things fun. Remember in math class when you just had numbers and then all of a sudden in algebra they threw in a bunch of letters? Look at that, I got letter drill bits. T, U, what the heck? Who's throwing letters? There's L, M, N, O, P. Who threw letters into the drill bits? I don't know, you got me. Next we're gonna use a little geometry to find the center of this piece of wood. So I'm gonna take my square, I'm gonna go corner to corner, both directions, 
Now I know where dead center is. We're going to drill this first with a small drill bit so it doesn't wander around. Next question, what kind of drill bit is this? Do you remember the name of it? All right, it's going to pull all the sawdust out of the hole. So we're going to try and hold this perfectly straight as we go down. Pull it back out, you see all the sawdust come out of the hole. Now we'll put the correct size drill bit, quarter inch, same size as our dowel. Next question, I'm using a hand drill. If we were in the production lab, what machine would we use to ensure that we could drill a perfectly straight hole? Because this wobbles around. What machine would ensure that we draw a perfectly straight hole in the classroom? We're going to take a precision measurement of one finger and then use my, use my square. All right, let's cut that triangle piece out. Put our piece of wood in. Now we're gonna go back to sixth grade. Remember the name of this saw? All right, I'll give you a hint. This shape is what it starts with. So what is the name of this saw? Do you remember from sixth grade? This little dowel is gonna fit in this hole, so we need it the exact length of this. So we're going to set that right on there. No measuring required. You remember the name of this piece of wood? What do you call a round piece of wood? What I need to do now is I got to sand off and make one side of this flat. There we go. If we look at that, you can see that one side's tapered, the other side's not. Next question. What is this material called? All right, it's some kind of gritty Material used to, sh to smooth wood. What's the name of it? Oh, somebody left a delicious banana. I think it's time for a break and having a banana. All right, all that hard work. Let's have a delicious banana that somebody left for me. Oh man, look at this banana. Oh, it looks so delicious. It looks delicious. What the heck? How does somebody cut my banana without breaking the peel? That is so weird. Look at that. How do you cut a banana without cutting the banana skin? Stay tuned to the end of the video to find out how you can make your own trick banana. Next, I'm going to use these tools. They're called files to remove some of the marks left from the sand, uh, the saw, and then. Just like in sixth grade, I'm going to round off all the corners. Are you bored of filing yet? Because I sure am. And just like when you made the buck saw in sixth grade, you got to go through and take off all 90 degree edges. Now that we're done filing, we gotta glue in that thing. So I'm gonna take some wood glue here. Do you remember what is the most important rule when using any kind of glue? Most important rule when using any type of glue. Do you remember? And so you can figure out how the glue works. Put a little bit in there. Take my little piece. I'm gonna rotate it around a little bit. Push it in just a little far. <whistles> Let's sand it up. So one of the questions was, what is this paper called with this grit on it? And this has a number of 120, and we're going to use it first on this machine. Now in sixth grade, we made you do this all by hand, but they make electric versions. So I actually made two whistles. This one I did a cool little point on the end of it. This one I'm going to do a different type of finish. I'm going to call, uh, do like a burn finish. Just gonna heat up the wood just a little bit, not actually light it on fire. There we go, check that out. All right, so we have two different whistles, two different tones. 
That'll annoy your family. <whistles> Somebody got confused by the dog, but we can do them at the same time. <whistles> Not only does it keep you safe in uncertain times, but it can drive your parents bonkers. Thanks for watching. Hit submit on your sheet when you're all done. Have a great day. All right, it's Mr. Corbett. How to make a trick banana. You need a banana. You need a needle with some thread. The goal is you want to take the banana and just underneath the skin, I'm going to try and push the needle under this piece of skin here. So it comes through and comes out the other side. And when I pull it through, I want to leave a little bit of thread hanging out. Then I'm going to go back in the same hole I just came out. I'm going to go underneath the skin. I'm going to come out down there. I'm going to pull it all, not all the way through, but close. Leave a little bit hanging out. Go back in the same hole I just came out of. Go underneath the skin, between the skin and the banana. It's coming out down there. And go all the way around. And then the final one, you want to go through the same hole here. And try to get as close as you can as to where you started. All right, now you're going to take the original end of the string and where you, from where you started, and you're going to pull. Ooh, try to keep the string together. And pull it all the way out. Now if you look at the banana, it looks normal. You're like, oh, it's time to eat it. And then when you're person goes to peel their banana, like, oh, I'm really hungry, I'm going to have a piece of banana. Oh no! How did you cut the banana? And if you do it three or four times all the way down, the banana will be in three or four pieces. Have fun with your family. Oh no. Hello? Hello? Got to the phone call. Drake, what's that?